All right, guys, before we set up the Warbonnet Ridge Runner to show you all the modifications and how they come into play, I want to show you some things up close here by the camera first. And this is the Ridge Runner in its home. Uh, this entire pack comes in at one pound, 12 ounces. So a little bit, you know, heavier than some of your ultralight hammocks out there, but there's a lot more in this bag than just the hammock itself. And for a spreader bar or a bird style hammock, I don't really think that that's too bad of a weight. Now this doesn't include the spreader bars. I'll show you those in just a second in the modifications or the upgrades that I made there. But I wanna take you through what's included in this one pound, 12 ounces. Now what I've done on the outside of my bag here, as you can see this little blue ink spot, I put that on the of the hammock that's going to be my head in. So if I have a particular side that I want my head in to be between two trees, I know which end is which. So let's go through the inside now and to show you what all is included in that weight. First of all are the uh, spider webbing style tree straps. I'll get to those in just a second. You have your Amstel Whoopi constructions with hardware. Again, close up on that in a minute. We're also going to have this little pack here, which is going to include now I keep this in here because it's got a little bit more room in the stuff sack uh, but these are actually uh, uh, stakes tin stakes that I use these are all wrapped with Amstel cord as well I'll explain that in a minute I keep six of these pre-wrapped in this little bag inside my hammock even though they're primarily used for the tarp and I also have tarp pullout lines again more Amstel complete with Dutch titanium hooks and Dutch fleece again more on that in just a second so all of that's actually in with the hammock itself and so uh the one the one pound 12 ounces does include that now i could easily put this in with my tarp but the tarp packs a little bit tighter this uh, bag has a little bit more room um, so i have a tendency to put all of this gear in with my hammock and that comes in again at one pound 12 ounces all right, so what I want to do now is show you each of the elements I'm talking about up close so you get a better idea of what I'm talking about. Now, what I want to say first is if you're not familiar with the bridge style uh, hammock or uh, the spreader bar style hammocks, well, I'm going to talk to you about that first because that's the first upgrade I made. Uh, traditional hammocks, gathered in hammocks, something like an Eno, maybe you may be familiar with, um, basically don't have any rigid hardware. They're just suspended to the tree, much in this style, with rope or straps of some sort. And then you get in the middle and you're kind of all cozy and typically lay at a diagonal to retreat to, you know, kind of get that flat feel. Unfortunately for me, I have a terrible lower back. Spinal stenosis runs in my family, and I just never slept comfortably. I always want to fidget and twist and turn, and I couldn't do that very easily in the other uh, style hammocks that I've used. Now, my first higher end hammock was in fact the war bonnet blackbird and i really love the design of it i really love the material the the uh, craftsmanship was awesome but i just couldn't get a great night's sleep so i sold that one and upgraded if that's a term you want to use to the ridge runner here so the spreader bars are what give you that flat feel these are poles that pushes the, the upper two corners and the lower two corners away from each other, allowing that fabric to stay taut so that you get a more flat lie. And the original poles that they shipped with, now I think, don't quote me on this, that Warbonnet now sends the Ridge Runner with the newer pole design, but if you've had it for a while, this is an upgrade that if you've used the spreader poles, you may be very interested in. And this is the first spreader pole set. Um, it's five different poles. They're all different lengths. They look kind of like candles they're they're all different heights um, and then you've got this one small pole right here and this was a big pain for me because i kept dropping it when i would take the hammock apart or set up it would fall um, sometimes i wouldn't notice it if i was taking it uh, down that was the, the bigger detriment was not realizing that i didn't have the pole until i went to pack it up um, and then keeping it stacked with all these other ones was just a pain so the narrow diameter poles are the foot in and the larger diameter are the head in. And this little pole right here was that extra little oomph you needed to get that bar all the way to its maximum width. And I just never really loved this setup. So the new design is the exact same weight. They're both add 12 ounces to your kit, um, but all the poles are basically the same size. Still got the wider diameter for the head end and the narrow diameter for the foot end, but all of them being cut to a similar length makes them way easier to put in your pack. I don't have a tendency to lose them at all, and everything is nice and tidy. So if you have a Ridge Runner, 
and you've run into this annoyance and you want something that's just a fair bit shorter so you don't have as much length running up the middle of your backpack, consider getting the pole upgrade. Now, I will link all of the items that I'm talking about in the description below, either from Warbonnet or from Dutch Gear. Um, I am not affiliated with either of those companies. They didn't pay me to make this review. I, these are not affiliate links. Uh, some of my... Um, Videos do have affiliate links, but I always acknowledge if there's any type of potential compensation for those links. In this case, there are none. So these are all of the items that I've purchased that work excellent for me, and I've linked them down in the description below in case that helps you out. So the spreader bar upgrade is number one, and I highly recommend it. The first upgrade that I made was over the traditional tree straps. Now when you order from or War Bonnet, you do have a couple configuration options of how you want to put this together. When I first ordered, I was using traditional nylon tree straps uh, with the traditional uh, buckles that kind of came connecting the am still to the tree and then onto the hammock. And I was using uh, little aluminum pieces like this or twigs, uh, sticks that I find outside at, that is, uh, to make like a marlin spike hitch to hook this over. I had carabiners and things like that. The modifications that I've since made to this make setup one a lot faster, a lot easier, and in my opinion, it's easier to adjust if I need to. And the first place that I made a change is in the tree straps. Now, um, these are the spider uh, tree straps. Again, they're linked below. And basically, all they are is two pieces of nylon. These happen to be blue and black, and they're double stitch in these segments here. These are super, super lightweight. In fact, they're, they feel lighter than the traditional nylon straps, but every like three or four inches, basically, you have a place to make a hook. Now, if you'd like to use a carabiner and you already have a whoopee slings and, and things like that that you use, um, this is highly recommended because you don't have to change your knot and move your thing. Now, obviously with your whoopee sling, you can adjust how far up and down it comes. But if you want to adjust um, how high up the tree your connection point is, um, for whatever reason, this is a quick way to do it. But even if you don't, this is such a fast way to do a setup that I'm never going to go back to the way I did it before. I'm going to go ahead and set the war bonnet up now. And the first thing you're going to notice is I'm not picking trees of the right size. I'm going to use this tree here, which honestly would be fine to support me, but I'm going to link to probably this little tree here um, just to get a better view. It was hard to find trees that had kind of clearing in the middle. This isn't a normal spot where I camp, but it was a place that had decent sunlight so I could film this. And so what I'm going to do now is just kind of wrap these around the tree, and then I'm going to pick the nearest rung and pass them through themselves to secure it, just like you probably would one of your traditional uh, nylon straps. I'm just going to find the outermost webbing loop, or you can pick a different one further down if you want to shorten it up. Just like that. I'm going to put the other one, like I said, on this much smaller tree for the purposes of this setup, because I'm actually not going to lay it in it or anything here. I'm just going to show you guys what I'm doing here. All right, so with the connection points on the war bonnet to uh, try to get the ridge runner attached to a tree, you're obviously gonna have two lines coming off the ends of the spreader bar points that meet at a junction, and then that junction is gonna run to your tree strap, which we just talked about. And depending on how you get it configured, you can get straps with buckles and things like that. Um, one of the ways that I had it set up was the traditional and still style loops that come off the corners. They met at these buckle kind of junctures here in the middle, and then that line went up to the tree with whoopee slings. And I added those on. They've got a lot of videos up there showing you how to do that if that's configuration you want to try. But my modification is slightly different. I'm going to show you those pieces of hardware now. Um, so what I've done is I have purchased, again, this is all from Dutchware, um, Dutch gear, I should say. I'm just gonna show you one now. There's two pieces of hardware and then Amstil. Now, if you're not familiar with Amstil, let me grab it. Okay, so Amstil basically is plasticky cordage that you can pass in through itself, creating kind of like a uh, Chinese finger uh, trap style constriction point 
on your cord. So as you lay in the hammock, it pulls tight on itself, preventing slippage and you can get up very easily and use the berry, which I'll show you in a minute. It's kind of like a tail running through the middle of the cord to tighten and will basically shorten or lengthen uh, the distance your hammock is to the tree so you're not constantly messing with your straps. So brilliant design. And what I've done is I've ordered some Amstel. Again, this is from Dutch Gear um, in different colors and widths. And then they got little needles here. Um, sorry, that's in a plastic bag. But basically, it's like sewing into itself. Um, there's demonstrations of that. A, a Dutch actually, I think, has put a video out. But uh, instead of talking to you about how to make the Amstel loops, I'm going to show you how I use them. So basically, I've made a whoopee sling myself that is continuous on both sides, so there's no single end. And what I've done on one end is used the Mantis piece of hardware with the closed loop on this side here. They have a uh, dual mantis basically where there's two hooks um, and they have this kind which has the closed loop over here. Now you can get these pre-made with Amstel connected to them um, but because I was trying to figure out my own um, distances and things like that I wanted to try it out. I got the closed length and then basically did um, a whoopee sling style configuration. So this is Amstel with a loop attached to the mantis and on this end, it's a bridge, stamp, uh, bridge hammock whoopee hook. And basically, you can see the two little hooks there with the closed loop on the end. Um, these support like a 1,000 pounds. You're not going to have any issues with it. But basically, this end's locked in this loop. And then this end here acts just like a traditional whoopee sling where you pull the loop through yourself, constricting this end and then passing it back through. So if you're familiar with whoopee slings, this doesn't function any differently. But what I have on this end, instead of just putting the loop over a toggle or through a carabiner, I've used the double hook here. And that allows me to loop both dog bone ends that come off of the end of the ridge runner to this, allow me to run this to the tree, and then back to those genius spider straps. As they hang from the tree, just like this, you take one end of your manis, uh, pass it through, I got a section that's stuck here, pass it through the webbing, just like this, and then you push both ends through just like that and the weight will rest on these stitch seams and then all I do is take the other side of the whoopee sling the am steel and wrap it back over itself like this and that is how I connect to the tree okay so I talked about the modifications to the end of the war bonnet ridge runner where the spreader bars connect to the hammock itself now i believe again uh don't quote me on this but i believe the newer versions are without the metal buckles that they used to have that look just like this um, but mine came with those and basically what they did what these were on the nylon straps around the end the, the nylon uh, stitching and then you ran your uh, spreader bar pole through this spoke here and then this had a dog bone style am still that went out to the junction point and these clanged around a little bit they added a little bit of weight um, the four of them together you know not super heavy um, I'll weigh them and put the, the description put it in the description below or flash it up on the screen somewhere but basically I cut these off because when I saw the modifications that Warbonnet had made well I just did them myself and basically those modifications are using am still to make a dog bone. So one end attaches just kind of through itself, just like that, through the end of the hammock. And I'll show you a close up on how it's actually working in a minute. And then there's a second loop that's open in the middle of the Amstel. So you have a termination loop closed off, another open loop, and then it's closed off and it runs to the end of the tree. And that loop takes the place of the metal opening in here and you don't have a section junction second junction point the am still just runs right off of the uh into the hammock there's a loop in the am still for the spreader bar to pass through and then off on to in my case the double hook again so my tree strap is secure now i'm just going to open the one at eye level because it's convenient again take the mantis run it through make sure the middle point's flat and then just take one of the two sides, loop it over, and then I just kind of pull it back to center and that's not going anywhere. And then the other end is going to connect to the end of the hammock where the dog bones come off of the spreader bar. And basically they terminate into two loops just like this. 
and I'm going to take one off of each side and hook them through the points just like that. So on this end of the hammock, this is again the head end, um, I've added these little kind of V-line locks uh, to this so that as you put these into the tree, they're a little bit easier to adjust. Um, again, nothing in the original design was detrimental, but I just feel like this is easier and faster. So this a traditional plastic hook added. This is just some shot cord. Um, you can run this to this juncture here or up around the tree, which is what I'm gonna do now, and loop it to itself. And this is just to keep the mesh, the bug netting up. And if it's not pulled taut enough, all you have to do is grab the end of the shot cord, pull, and then let the V kind of grab into the groove. And that's all you need to get that hooked. And this is uh, an Amstel loop that I've added here to the ring to secure it to it just so there's no shot cord here. So all of the spring is from the V-lock on. So I use this double hammock whoopee hook to secure my under quilt. Um, even in the summer, you're probably gonna need some type of under quilt. In that regard, I typically use the sleeve. I have a double fabric one here. I pass a really inexpensive uh, sleeping pad through it just to kind of give me a mosquito barrier and a little bit of warmth. But as the temperature drops, if you've hammock camped, you know you need an under quilt. And uh, sometimes traditional under quilts, how they're designed, um, they work well with gathering in. They kind of spring around the shot cords kind of pull the the material up and around which can be problematic for spreader bar hammocks because they need to keep the under quilt kind of pushed out into form and so what i've done with this is i've modified my under quilt as well now i use uh both of i have a top quilt under quilt from underground um, i've got some uh top quilt under quilt from some other manufacturers as well but the one i'm going to show you here is actually my 10 degree uh under, uh, underground quilt and I don't know if they make this particular model anymore um, but I'm going to show you what I did because it might be beneficial for you to make further modifications. So this modification is actually for the hammock itself because all of my under quilts have been adapted to work with this system and I'm going to demonstrate now again on my thickest. What I've got here on the end of this is the shot cord. Normally it comes out bunched and it's got a bunch of loops. I've uh, cut it and resecured it where I just have one thick piece of shot cord running the full length of both sides. It's knotted and it's got a slide lock on it right here. And then I've also got this other piece of shot cord here is the one that runs uh, horizontal to pull the, the ends closer together, kind of bunch it up around you. And then I've got orange shot cord here with a line lock, a cord lock that again, I got from Dutch gear. And I'm going to show you how I use that. So basically what I do is I pull the line out where I think I'm going to need it. And I use this snap hook It's better than just for am steel. I take the shot cord, pull it out for however far I think I'm going to need it. And then snap it on that line and it really doesn't move but once you put weight and stuff it can get pulled through as you can see but it holds it in place really well so I kind of slide that out and then what I do is I take the line lock and I push it back up against there so there's not as much room for it to slide and then for additional security to keep this really pulled up long ways I use this line lock system and basically I'm going to undo the loop on this end and I don't want to pull it all the way out and then I'm going to take it, pass it over, and then use the line lock here to secure it so that the now the fabric is held to this. And the bungee tightness, how high it's going to actually lift up. If I loosen this, the whole under quilt will sag. If I drop this, it'll, it'll sag down. So I use this to keep the tight, the sides tight and up. And then I use this bungee here, this orange one, to keep the fabric pulled and attached to the spreader bar. So in this case, spreader bar actually has an advantage because it's going to keep that fabric pulled um, and close to my body all night. And I've slept super comfortable. And this has a little draft collar in it. And uh, once I get situated in there and I've pulled this as tight as I need it to be, I've slept warmer than I've ever slept in a tent. So this setup has been an absolute awesome blessing to me in the wilderness. The last segment of the video got messed up, so I'm going to try to do a quick voiceover to explain it now, and that is the waterproof undercover that I also made. Basically, it's a large sheet of Gore-Tex fabric that I got online that I measured uh, 
when the underquilt, this particular underquilt was on the war bonnet and I measured it so that it took into account the droop of the insulation so that it didn't crush the down. And then once I had those measurements, I basically sewed a loop all the way around the perimeter and threaded a piece of shock cord through the center. And then in the four exposed corners, I have a simple little split ring that I then flip over the hook in the corner uh, that I showed you earlier in the video. And this protects from driving rain, rain bouncing off of leaves on the ground, um, snow, whatever. Even with a tarp, this has been really helpful and it prevents me from having to put a uh, wet down back into a compression sack. All right, guys, losing light fast. So that means this is the end of the War Bonnets uh, Ridge Runner Modification Upgrades video. I hope you found some of the things presented here uh, helpful as you consider making adaptations or changes to your gear. Again, some of these were um, modifications that I actually made to the gear. Others were just additions that I implemented from companies like Dutch Gear to make setup and takedown easier and my pack weight just a little bit lighter. Um, I'm also going to be posting a video on how I use the various pieces of Dutch uh, gear with my Warbonnet Superfly. I'll show you how I set that up and how I implement it. Again, a lot of that stuff you may have seen before, but maybe not all in one video. But I figured since I have the gear and I'm out here in the wilderness, why not make a video and share it with you guys. To make sure you don't miss any of those, please consider subscribing. And if you enjoyed this video, please uh, give it a thumbs up. And if you subscribe, I promise not to flood your inbox with notifications because I don't post super often. Uh, but when I do, maybe you'll find the information presented helpful. Uh, guys, I hope that you're enjoying all of your outdoor gear and better yet, the outdoors itself. Be safe. And until next time, God bless.